In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that's new in the Easy Camera Tracking add-on since version 105 and we're currently in version 114 and it has a couple of uh, beta features which you can enable and disable with this checkbox in the preferences and as you can see now you're able to not only track a moving camera shot but also a shot where the camera only rotates and you can choose whether to use Colmap uh, which is the photogrammetry tracker that was used in the previous version or Blender's internal motion tracker which is less advanced but very very quick so I've already selected a tripod shot and you can press this button to preview it. So this is the shot we're gonna track, which was previously not possible because there is no moving camera, just a rotating camera. But now using the only rotate button, it switches automatically to using Blender's internal motion tracker. We're gonna choose regular because it's not a very smooth shot. We're gonna try high quality because it's already quite quick. You can see it's a beta feature, so it may have some um, bugs. And if you do encounter a bug, please contact me and let me know. And now let's just start tracking. You can see it's a beta feature. That's okay. Let's open the console. So as you can see, it created the frames from the video and then it starts tracking from the start and from every 60 frames and then it tracks backwards. It has removed all problematic tracks and it remained with 118 tracks, which should be enough to solve it and it seems like it successfully solved in seven seconds so let's check it out press play and you can also see there's a white line here this represents a horizon and you can use it to rotate the scene so that the horizon ends up relative to the real horizon so now when you play you can see we tracked and oriented the tripod shot correctly and now you can just continue your vfx work so I've just selected a drone clip. Let's check it. And it's quite long, so we're gonna trim it. So maybe this is a good place to start, somewhere around 109. So let's enter that here, 109, and end up at 114 or something. So because the camera is not only rotating, but also moving, we're gonna use this option. It's a smooth drone shot, so this is fine. It doesn't zoom. And we can choose either to use call map or blender so in this case let's give blender a go because it's very quick let's choose the quality settings and you can also choose custom and change all the tracking settings yourself but for now we're just going to use the quality settings which is fine start tracking so it's creating the image sequences and tracking forwards so you can see that there are some warnings but i think it still was able to track successfully in 10 seconds Let's check it, press play. And you can see the 3D markers stick with the footage, so everything looks good. And now we can use the point cloud for orientation. You can just select three points which are on the ground. So like this one, this one, and this one. No, this is in a tree. This one's better. Press F to make a triangle and press set camera orientation. And this will move and rotate the empty which is the parent of the camera and the point cloud, so that the corner with the shallowest angle is the origin of the world. And one of the other edges is aligned with the x-axis, as you can see. So now you can just grab the empty and move it around so that this seems like a more logical uh, world origin, rotate it. It's not 100% perfect, but for a track that's done in 10 seconds, this is quite a good start. Now let's try the same thing with the call map tracker so let's delete everything press call map and let's choose fast start tracking so press ok and there you go it's done within a minute let's increase the radius of the 3d points and when using the call map motion tracker it now also adds a cleanup function which will hide some of the 3d points which are floating in the air and you can hide these by lowering the distance value and the point cloud when using the call map tracker it also has color. So when I disable the background, you can see a nice representation of the scene. And again, to orient the scene, just pick three points that are on the ground, press F and click set camera orientation. And there you go. Now you can just find tweak by grabbing the empty and moving it around. For this, the camera background is handy. And again, we can add a horizon and see where we're at. 
So let's rotate the empty. And there we go. A perfect track within a minute. Now there are a few more scene setup buttons I want to show you. The add floor button was already present, which add a plane with the footage protected onto it. Let's make it shadeless. But you can use this model to reconstruct the scene. So let's add a cube in this case, let's scale it up. Now let's lower the resolution for now and do a test render. You can see the horizon is already disabled in the render view. So is the point cloud. So you don't need to worry about that. But the video is not yet present in the background. There are a few ways you can fix that. You can either uh, set it up as the world texture. Let's try that. And now let's enable the scene world. And you can see that the footage is projected as a world texture. It looks a bit strange when viewing it from a different angle than the camera. But when rendering it, you can see the footage is whole again. The disadvantage of this is that when rendering it with um, motion blur enabled, the background will also get motion blurred. So it might be more useful to use the compositor, which you can use with this button, setup compositor. And now when you enable the compositor in the camera viewport, you can see the same result. Let's test it with a render. And there you go. And now what it did in the background is it enabled compositing and it combined the rendered layer with the footage. So that if you have motion blur enabled and I render this, the 3D model will get motion blur and the background will stay the same because it already has motion blur. So that's a, a little pro tip for you. I would always use the um, compositor for rendering a scene like this. Now, if you want to use a shadow catcher, I'm going to add a sun and disable shadeless and enable rendering. And now you can match the sun direction with the scene direction. Something like this look good. And let's switch to cycles and make this object a shadow catcher with this button. This will automatically set the render engine to cycles, enable the GPU. I think that's it. And now when you add like a text object to the scene, it will realistically cast the shadow on the object. So when you render it, it renders the 3D object and the shadow. And in the compositor, it combines it with the background. So that's a quick way to use the shadow catcher. Here you can see a fun little test where I use the shape of the tower as a soft body. And I collided it with some, some of the geometry. And when you render it, you get something like this. So I hope you like this update. Let me know if you have any questions or if you encounter a bug. And I'll see you all next time. Cheers.